Hamas announced today that it has accepted a mediated ceasefire proposal, but Israel says the deal Hamas has agreed to may not be acceptable to Israel. The details of the proposal are still unknown, but the White House says it is working with Israel to review Hamas's response. The last thing I would ever want to do from this podium is say something that could put this very sensitive process at greater risk. We are at a critical stage right now. Uh, we got a response from Hamas. I mean, my goodness, folks, I don't know that it gets any more sensitive than right now. And the worst thing that we can do is start speculating about what's in it. This news comes hours after Israel told Palestinians in some areas of Rafah to evacuate. Israel has said repeatedly it will launch a ground attack in the southern Gaza city where more than a million people uprooted by the war have been sheltering. The Israeli military says it is using text messages, airdrop flyers and social media to alert roughly 100,000 people in the eastern parts of Rafah. Israel says it will push on with its operation in Rafah even as its negotiators examine the proposed ceasefire agreement. Rhonda Sleem is a senior fellow and director of the Conflict Resolution and Track 2 Dialogues program at the Middle East Institute. And John Allen is the former Canadian ambassador to Israel. They're going to walk us through all of this and what's been a confusing day. Uh, it's good to see you both. So, so Rhonda, what do you make of this? Hamas, I, I, I jumped when I saw that they had accepted a ceasefire proposal, but then we find out Israel has rejected it because what Hamas has accepted is not what Israel says it has agreed to translate this. What, how, how should we assess this? Well, I mean, by the way, I mean, reports on the ground in Rafah are saying that uh, there is already an operation taking place, Israeli operation involving bombardment, artillery shelling mm -hmm. on the eastern part of Rafah. So whatever Israel wanted to do in Rafah has started. Whether this is going to be a limited operation or the big ground invasion, we don't know. Uh, but uh, so what Hamas has done is say, you know, basically they accepted this proposal uh, that was put uh, forward and negotiated not only with the Qataris and the Egyptians, but also with the director of the CIA, Ambassador Burns, which, in, which, which, which says that whatever framework for a proposal has emerged has been, you know, has emerged out of this discussion in uh, acknowledged and accepted by the United States. Now, uh, pre the Israeli prime minister has, I think, lots of pressure from inside his war cabinet, especially the right wing elements, not to accept the proposal. At the same time, they are the families of the hostages and other member, other segments of the Israeli society that want the proposal to go forward. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, you have an American president who really wants this proposal to be approved by Israel, maybe with some amendments. So where we are today is that Israeli prime minister has said, I'm going to send my negotiator back to Cairo. Hamas is sending back its negotiators to Cairo. And then the negotiations will continue on whatever has been accepted by Hamas until now. John, uh, how, how do you view the developments of the past uh, few hours? Well, I, I, I think the, the key here is that we don't really know what's in this proposal. Mm. We, we've never known exactly what has been in negotiated. We know the broad elements of it. The bottom line continues to be, does the proposal um, speak of a, a temporary ceasefire or does it speak of the end of the conflict? Um, it, we know that up until now, the Israelis have said they're not going to uh, accept an end of conflict proposal, and Hamas uh, has said just the opposite. Um, so that's really, wh where are we at? What does the proposal actually say? Um, I agree that, uh, you know, the Americans have been involved. Uh, I would expect if, if this proposal actually said... Uh, that Hamas accepts a temporary ceasefire going forward and wants to begin the exchange of uh, prisoners for hostages, um, I think it would be uh, hard to believe that Bibi and company would refuse it. So there still seems to be some details that will be negotiated. <clears throat> As was said, this is a limited operation so far. Limited, people are being killed. Houses are being destroyed, but <clears throat> this is not the ground operation that everybody is uh, so concerned about uh, that would be a complete and utter humanitarian disaster. Israel doesn't have the troops 
uh, in Gaza right now to proceed with a ground operation. So this is limited. They're asking 100,000 people who have already moved, I don't know how many times, to move again. Um, it's from a specific area where they obviously believe um, either specific tunnels or Hamas leaders or parts of these battalions are located. Um, and uh, we're going to have to see uh, over the next couple of days how it proceeds. But I agree. Biden wants this. The hostage families want this. Um, uh, Hamas appears to want it, although... You know, two days ago, uh, Hamas launched rockets from Rafah, killed four Israelis, injured 11. That doesn't sound like uh, a, uh, a side that is interested in peace, uh, especially when Rafah is at the heart of this, of this humanitarian potential disaster. So there's games being played, I think, on all sides still. Well, so Rhonda, on that point, right, there have been the missiles shot into Israel, as John outlined, and now we have this limited operation happening in Rafah that, once again, forcing the displacement of people into other areas of Gaza that have already been flattened throughout this conflict. If, if there is no willingness from Mr. Netanyahu to accept a permanent end and no willingness by Hamas to accept a temporary pause in the conflict, how does this get overcome at all? Or is this just a public relations exercise uh, being played out today to try to maybe stop the Rafa in, uh, activity from, from happening? Now, I mean, John is, is correct. We don't know for sure what yeah. are the contents of this proposal. But uh, at least, uh, si uh, I mean, analysts that are close to Hamas, as well as diplomats in the region, have been leaking some elements of this deal. Right. And it's, it calls for, like, what, 100-plus days, 100, in fact, 24 days of, cease, of, of pause, if we can put it this way, over three phases, during which Israel will get all of its hostages, civilian, military, it will get everybody, of course, who is a lie, it will get, it will get the, you know, unfo unfortunately, the, the, I mean, it will get, sorry, the bodies of, of its citizens who were killed, you know, tragically. And then, uh, and then Hamas will get a temporary hold, you know, on, on, on the hostilities. It will get release of Palestinian prisoners at a much larger number than the Israeli hostages. But also, I think what is the sweetener to the deal right now is, is, is supposedly what the Americans have been, you know, promising uh, the regional mediator or have been saying to the regional mediator. And what the American administration has been saying few times, including Secretary Blinken during his last visit to the region, is, is that this temporary halt, which is of hostilities, which is, you know, about 120-some days, maybe could create or open the political space to build, to build towards a permanent ceasefire, hmm. you know, and that requires other negotiation. So basically what, what the Americans are hoping is that they create a, a new fait accompli on the ground where both sides will become somehow interested and incentivized to continue with this ceasefire uh, 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 long term, but also what has happened between in the last in the last rounds of negotiation, especially during the meeting between Secretary Blinken and foreign ministers of six Arab um, countries, uh, is the promise that these Arab countries have may have have made uh, through their foreign minister of of a large amount of aid toward the reconstruction of, of Gaza. And has, that has been the sweetener that, be, that has been added to the deal, which right. has not existed until now. So, so John, um, on the domestic situation, you, you said that you can't imagine a scenario where if it was only a temporary uh, pause in hostilities that Hamas agreed to, that, that Benjamin Netanyahu would say no. Um, we're seeing the Jordanian foreign minister saying that he's, uh, Netanyahu is jeopardizing um, uh, the ceasefire potential now by bombing Rafa. W what do you think the domestic situation is like right now uh, for the Israeli government with, with these leaks and counter leaks and assessments uh, coming out about what's on the table here? Well, the, the, as we've mentioned, the pressure is on Bibi uh, with respect to the hostages. Uh, there are many, many Israelis that are demonstrating in the streets now, increasing numbers. 
um, and, and many Israelis who really believe that the hostages should have been a priority from day one and should be right now. Um, and as we mentioned, he's also got a lot of pressure from Joe Biden, um, which he has up until now ignored, um, and, and we, we know all about that. But on the other hand, he's, he's got Ben Gavir and, and mm. Smotrich and other very right-wing people who are holding up his coalition and who have said that if you agree uh, to an end of conflict, we're out of your government right now. Yeah. And, uh, and that uh, is, you know, in many people say, and, and I tend to agree, one of Bibi's main concerns is Bibi here uh, trying to protect the interest of the hostage families and the people of Israel, or is he uh, as concerned or more concerned about this government falling apart and then him ending up uh, at a trial, etc., losing power? Mm -hmm. um, nobody knows that answer either, but um, he's he's definitely under conflicting pressure, and I think he's telling different things to different people. I think when he sits for two and a half hours with Blinken and when he talks to Biden for an hour on the phone, he leaves one impression. And then when he goes and he talks to Ben Gavir and Smotrich, he promises them that he's never going to let uh, uh, Hamas leaders out and he's going to go into Rafa, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I, you know, I'm not sure he knows what he's going to do ultimately. Okay, uh, Rhonda Saleem with the Middle East Institute and former Canadian Ambassador to Israel, John Ellen. Uh, it feels like it's going to be a, a big week. Um, don't be surprised if we call you again. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.